Hi once again and welcome back to our blog. I am Jim Cuervo, your senior instructor here at Digital Drafting Systems. Today we will be talk talking about some of the things that you can do with temporary or witness dimensions in Vevit, like reposition dimensions, changing objects to dimension, just to name a few. Let's get started, shall we? In this sample, we have a small room with a couple of dimensions, but we are not here to talk about dimensions. We are here to talk about temporaries. So let's take a look at some of them. By selecting any object in Revit, I can go ahead and then see the temporary dimensions, sometimes called witness dimensions. Now, we know that we can actually make them permanent dimensions by clicking on that little item that we just saw. Let me undo so you can see it again. If we select the object, we can make them permanent by selecting this item here. Another thing that we can do is the following. If I select the object, I can reposition the witness dimension to dimension not just from the mi middle of the object being dimensioned, but to, to the sides also, such as this left button mouse click on this little grip here and you'll notice that it's actually shifting between positions of the object that is not just true here it's also true here at the wall for example same thing clicking left button button mouse will actually reposition the place of witness same thing here now another thing that you can do is reposition the object you're going to dimension to. In other words, if I don't want to dimension from this wall, I want to dimension from this one, all I really have to do is just grab that little grip there, come back until I see the alignment point, and now I've actually renamed, uh, realigned it or redimensioned it to a different object. We know also that if we shift the object, the temporary dimensions also change for us. Now that we've seen that, let's see what we can do with these dimensions once we make them permanent. By making them permanent, now I have the ability to add or subtract this way. Okay? And also reposition as we saw earlier. Now, one thing that uh, we haven't touched on is the idea that we can do things with this little lock here. For example, I know that if I select the little lock, I can toggle it on or off, meaning lock the dimension or not. But did you also know that if I right-click on that lock, I see uh, show related objects to the dimension? And by doing that, it gives me this little dialog box, which allows me to then see exactly what I'm dimensioning to here. For example, I can go and see, okay, right now in blue is the door. So it's telling me the door, single flush, 36 inch by 84. It's not only telling me that it's the door, it's also telling me the family name. If I go to the next one, it's telling me also the family name of that particular wall that I'm actually dimensioning to. If I press show, for example, it will automatically zoom so I can see the object that is showing and I can cycle through all of the objects that are being done. In this particular case, what it, I did is I accidentally moved it over to my, uh, my elevation, which I then have to close here, go back to, the, to this one, and so I can then go ahead and go back and see once again what we were doing, which is show related. So on the one hand, I can page through the objects. I can then select show to focus in on the object, and I also get to see what is specifically, for example, the family name of the door that I'm actually dimensioning to. With that, these are some of the things that you can actually do with temporary dimensions. I hope you've enjoyed it. This has been Jim Cuervo with uh, Digital Drafting Systems. It's telling you, have a great day. Be safe. Until the next one. Thank you.